Hello everyone and welcome! W wait, that's not it. Wait, wait, wait. Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today we are talking about CAN Network. Uh, the name of this CAN is Control Area Network. Network, network. So, um, today I'm talking about this because some, some of you do not understand well what does it mean to have a CAN Network. And today I'm trying to explain you very quickly why it's so much easier to have a network on your car and how can we take advantage of having such a system. So today, for example, we are talking about speed. The car, the several units, the control units, want to know the speed of the car. That is very important and common nowadays to know it. Let's imagine 55 kilometers an hour. Two miles is about 30 miles an hour, I believe. Obviously, on the ECU, you want to know what is the speed of the car because of the emissions and the regulation for the injection of fuel. So that's, that is very clear for you, maybe. Uh, for the ESP and ABS control, as you may have seen on my video about ABS and ESP, this is the unit that, it, that is responsible to inform the speed of the car. So very quickly, let's say here we have four wheels. Okay, and the four wheels gave you an average of 55 kilometers an hour. And that information goes about to run all of those units. So for the power steering, you need to know what is the speed because you, you want to have a different kind of assistance on the power steering. So I think that is very easy to understand. On the radio, on the stereo, on the head unit, you want to know also the speed because if you have adaptive volume, you want to have a lower or higher volume once you go faster or slower on your car. You can also turn off this function, okay? Or on. <laughs> on the cluster, that is okay. <laughs> you want to know the speed of the car, obviously. So you have your cluster with the five, five kilometers an hour, okay? On the auto gearboxes, being a pure auto or a TCT, for example, you want to know the speed of the car because you, have, you want to have a perfect management of the gearing of the auto gearbox. On the auto windshield wipers, you also want to know the speed of the car because if you are going faster with the same amount of rain, you need faster wipers. If you notice on older cars that do not have CAN network, the wipers, the auto wipers, are, are always a little bit uh, numb and stupid because they don't know the speed. They only regulate themselves with the sensor that is on the windshield. Very quickly, that sensor works like this. You have a little bit of a box on the windshield with uh, a sensor that is composed with an emitter and a receiver, like this and this. And when you have droplets of rain, all over the windshield, the more rain you have, you have a sender of light. Once that sender hits a droplet of rain, it bounces back to the receiver, and the more the receiver receives, the receiver receives, and the more the receiver receives the light emitted by this first uh, sender one, the more the cadence of the wipers goes up. That and the speed you now have a better working of the auto wipers, okay? And also, you have your body computer. For the 156, you don't have this one, or most of those ones. For the body computer, you need the info, for example, so the boot does not open while driving. You need that for the alarm system, for example. You need that for a lot of reasons, okay? And also, this is the main computer of the car, the body computer, the body, the shell of the car. This is the one. So how does this, all these uh, control units speak with each other? That is very easy to understand. You just need a wire. Just one, well, two. But let's see here. The ECU talks with the ABS. The ABS talks with the power steering. Not on this specific order, okay? It does not matter the order, right away. The power steering talks to the auto gearbox, the auto with the cluster with the radio, with the wipers, with the body. And now you have a second wire 
In case of failure of this first one, with the same signal, only in reverse. Okay? If you have an airplane, a commercial one, you have double, quadruple the signal because it is a safety feature and up there, <laughs> that is a must. So you, if you have one failure, two failures, three failures on the wire, you always have at least one on the airplane to have a backup, okay? So the second one is always a backup and uh, there is one more safety, safety feature on the car network. The car network is around since on the cars since around the year 2000 or less, but the year 2000 and I'm happy to report that this is an excellent system. It's much more easier to diagnose and work on the system with CAN network because everything talks with each other and you can enter through the OBD via the body computer and this way you can talk to everyone and everyone is present. If any one of them stops working on your cluster the kilometers or miles start to blink i already did a video about that and that it, that means that the body knows how many um, units you have talking and working with each other and as soon as one of them stops working stops communicating the body knows it and says one of you is not working which is it so it, it orders a link of the kilometers to warn the driver something is wrong, okay? And that is a very nice way to say it because it's not just another pictogram, it's not just another warning light, it is a flashing of the kilometers or miles that really scares the driver. And that is for a good reason, because imagine you lose the ABS. That's, that's messed up because everything goes bananas, okay? So on the Alpha 147, on the 159, the Vrera, the Julia, the Stelvio, everything 2005 up uses CAN network, okay? And if you are talking down to 156, and uh, that's it, the, it's only the second series of the 156 has CAN network, but only between these two, okay? And some of them to the cluster. So on the 156, you have on the 156 you have, let's forget about this for a moment. On the 156 you have this and this. Okay. Ta da! So, 156 like this, 147 and up, everything. Absolutely everything. Now, uh, let's talk about these uh, wires for a minute. What does these wires transport in them? It is not 12 volts. It is not uh, 5 volts, it is, it is not ground, it, it's nothing, okay? Well, it's something. Uh, it's a digital signal. And that digital signal is reversed in mirrored on purpose. If you have a voltmeter and put one probe on this wire and another probe on the ground, you will read about 4.5 volts. That's something. But it is not 5 volts. And even if it was, it is not truly 5 volts or 4.5. If you have an oscilloscope, you can, and that, that is the only way to diagnose these systems, you have a square signal with uh, ones and zeros, okay, on one line. Let's imagine here the red one. And on the blue one, you have the exactly same signal only on reverse. Okay, imagine it's the same. <laughs> what is the use of that? Let's imagine you want to add a sound system. You still, you still have here all the, the systems working, okay? Everything is nice and good, nice and fresh. Everything is great. And you want to pass a cable from your battery 
that thick one, you're going to pass it and you pass it through to your hood, to your amp, okay? As you pass over a CAN line, you are disturbing the signal because you have now an electromagnetic interference over here, okay? The beauty of this system is, as soon as you introduce a electromagnetic um, field, you are disturbing the signal, yes, but you are disturbing it on the same wavelength. So, if you have a disturbance on the signal here, let's imagine like this, you also have the same disturbance over here. So, the same distance from here to here is the same one from here to here, which means it is the same one that it was from here to here. Now, this, this wavelength is measured and you have, wait a minute, okay, from here to here, 0, 12, 0, 12 volts, and you have the same about, and you have the same wavelength so you do not lose the message. And this ones and zeros is binary code, it's a message, like you know, that goes in between all of these units. So this is a very, very good system. The two wires are there for the disturbance, and also if you lose a wire, you continue to have the message with a fault code, okay? Now, if you have a light turning on on your gearbox, so you have a warning light on your gearbox, so you, yeah, it's like a flower almost. Warning light on your gearbox. Can network not working correctly, but the car still goes through all the gears perfectly. And you well, maybe the problem is, is with the gearbox. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can have a problem on the plug over here, on the connector. Maybe. But if you do this, just with the multimeter, here or here, you will have, actually, for six here and for four here. here. In this way, this is not the correct way to do it, okay? This is just a shitty way to do to do it. Not a shitty way, a cheat way to do it. If you have zero volts over here or here, you have a broken line. Doing this, okay, doing this test over here, okay? Doing here. God. So in this way you can test every bit of CAN network if you have a, a, a problem over here or a here or here or here or there or there. In this way you can do it. Another cool one, very cool one. The cluster does not work like it did on my Alpha, not mine, my colleague's Alpha 164. Okay, let's put that on the Alpha 159. The cluster does not work. Where do you go to see the speed? The most reliable source is the ABS ESP unit. You can enter with your diagnose machine and see the speed. If it goes there, and if it goes there, you can enter, enter here and see the speed, and you see the speed, and you see not here, no, uh, and you see the speed over here and here, and you don't, do not see it here, or you can see it here with the diagnosis machine. The problem is the cluster. Now, if the speed is everywhere and the cluster does not show the, the, the speed, the problem can be with the gauge itself or inside of on the control unit because the cluster, it is a control unit. Okay, okay so this is the, the first video that I'm doing here with the whiteboard. I'm not really that comfortable doing, doing so. Uh, although I have some experience because I sometimes I do some technical training with my colleagues, but um, this is a bit different, okay? Another question that, that you guys have, uh, sometimes have for me is, can, can, can network, can it uh, work with the sensors? N the sensors are not can network. The sensors are not specific for can network. 
okay? Let's talk about here the sensor for the rain, okay? Okay, sometimes you have... Uh, wait a minute. The electrical brake switch. So, here you have it. The parking brake, as you, as you touch the button, you actuate the calipers, the electrical calipers, to break the, the parking brake. How can this electrical uh, system communicate with the ESP? It can, it can in fact, communicate via CAN. I'm always closing the them pens because they lose the alcohol. Okay, you can communicate via CAN. It's a very safe system because the parking brake has to be very secure. You can also communicate with LEAN. Let's talk about that in another video, okay? And the LEAN system is a kind of communication and sometimes we have both. Being this a safety feature, a security feature, you have to have them as most as uh, systems working as possible. Obviously, that, that uh, brake will have plus and minus, okay? And also possibly a signal for the illumination. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's why you have so many wires on one simple button. But your question may be, on the ABS sensors over there, do you have CAN sensors? The sensors themselves are not, okay? You have just two wires on the 156. Every, every car that has ESP ABS, you have two wires that go to, the, to your ABS and then it is the ABS unit that translates the force to, to the speed, to the average, and talks via CAN network to everyone. That's how you have your sensors that are normal for CAN or not. For example, here for the sensor for the rain, you also have normally just one, two, three wires. You have plus, minus, and signal. If you want to, want to know more about sensors, I can do a video for that. This whiteboard thing is really cool, man, because I'm thriving with ideas for this. Uh, so, in the CAN system, you have normal sensors. You can have a, a sensor that was developed for cars without CAN networks or LIN, and now you can integrate them normally, easily on these systems. So, that being said, I think you have an introduction of the CAN system. We did also see some malfunctions that can, can occur. One common malfunction on the PSA models, we, we must start to talk about PSA models because they are part of the family now. And one thing that happens a lot is the failure of the ESP. And that creates a no power steering issue. Very easy to uh, resolve but very expensive. We can also have a no power steering failure because of the power steering itself. It happened on the 207, for example, but on the early 207s, the issue was the ABS ESP. How can you distinguish between, between one or another? Doing the diagnosis, if you do not communicate with the ESP, that is the fault code. The symptom was no power steering. The issue is no ESP. You replace the ESP unit and you now have power steering because the, the source of the speed for the power steering is the ESP. Okay, they could do something like if the ESP is not working, the, the value for the power steering is 100%. Let's talk about that. To have 100% of power steering. But they didn't. So that's that. Okay, so this can happen very easily. This was possible with you guys. This whiteboard, this pens, this is not very cheap and I don't have still the, the, the tripod for to, to holding it. And I think I will not do that because this one, it will go also outside near the cars. Um, this was possible with you guys viewing the channel. Uh, this is the stuff, uh, this stuff was paid, yes, with your money. Thank you for that. For, from donations, from the AdSense, for, for all of those, that, that stuff. Mind you that it was not from this particular channel, it was a joint thing with my Portuguese channel too, because both channels go to the same AdSense and only with both channels I can have some revenue. So the two independent ones cannot give me any revenue.
but that's cool i have at least now i i have some and like this i can uh, give you this more thorough explanation this mic was also a borrowed uh, thing it is really better than the other one i believe if it is good if it is better because there is a lot of echo over here i will purchase a same um, microphone if you want more of this if you want more about sensors about uh, problems about specific things I, we talk about speed but we can also talk about a lot uh, other things but this is the most common one to, to explain i can do it all you can talk about the eobd plug as well guys let's cut this video in half this is the first part of the of this video next week i will launch the second part for this not to be as big as it's get, getting and um, as you can see now we get some idea how the can network works we also have a, an idea how some systems can interact with uh, each other and some problems and issues that are related to this system on the second part we'll have much more um, cases and uh, experiences that I have with the system and also some uh, answers to some questions that you may have like for example should you have your car in neutral when going downhill on a modern car uh, about the fuel consumption uh, that is so I will respond to that on the second part of this video